I would like to call our May 19th, 2021 or 2021 regular meeting of our District 100 regular board meeting to order. Uh, roll call, please. Here. Here. Cade. Here. Gallows. Redzinski. Here. Rego. Tinko Tong. Here. Weedman. Here. And we have a quorum. Please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Superintendent Ontego, would you please uh, uh, recite our mission and beliefs with the Bison Way statements, please? Sure. Fenton mission statement is to cultivate successful, passionate learners through rigor, relevance, and relationship. Fenton belief statements, successful, passionate learners thrive when we champion innovative teaching and engage learning. School and home collaborative effectively. We provide a safe, secure, and caring environment. We infuse social emotional learning into academics and culture. Diversity empowers our learning community. We prepare students to fulfill their civic responsibilities. The Bison Way. Students and adults at Fenton High School create a safe, caring, and empathetic environment where we believe in each other, respect diversity, communicate openly, grow together, and hold each other to high expectation to become the leaders and innovators of the future. Thank you, Superintendent Antenko. And uh, uh, Ms. Timmons, do we have any uh, requests for public comments? Yes, we do. We have two this evening. Okay, thank you. And, and, and just a reminder, uh, public comments are limited to three minutes per speaker. Uh, with a limit of uh, 30 minutes uh, per topic. First speaker is Clinton Porter, subject math staffing calcul calculators. Thanks. Thank you. Well, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. Uh, before I start, though, I'd just like to say I'm not here to speak on behalf of the FEA. I am an FEA member, but I'm speaking on behalf of what I feel is the best interest of our students in math education which I'm sure the FEA would, report, uh, would support, but I'm not here speaking on their behalf. So please attribute anything that's in there to me. At seven o'clock, you all received that in color. It's a little bit better to view an email. And it's a pretty simple idea. We cut two math teachers this year at Fenton High School, me due to retirement and a non-tenure teacher, making it the lowest math staffing in over 25 years without a significant loss in course requests. So now if you look at this, we have 26.4 students in every math class compared to, in the core, comparable classes, 21. I feel that that is not in the best interest of our students with more detail on the back page. And that is half of our classes have 28 or more kids. If you've been in our classroom, that's not a tenable setting. A quarter of them have 30 or more. As many as 34, 33, 33, 33, 32, 31, 31. You can see the numbers. With the loss that our kids are gonna have from the pandemic, increasing class sizes and cutting staff right now is, in my opinion, not the right path. And I'm asking the board to engage in a substantive conversation about restoring these two positions sooner rather than later as people are looking for jobs now. In an email from Mr. Antango that I received today said he's aware of the math staffing and they're looking at the numbers. The numbers are the numbers, they're too big. If we were to go to add one more, we'd go to 23.8, which would be in line with other departments in the core. 
we're at two would be equal to three total or two others. My other point in being here is that I've been asking as an employee for 21 years, 18 of those years I've been asking for our kids to be resourced with graphing calculators. I've asked for $25 buy-in or rentals and our students still don't have these calculators. It's much like a test book. It is a needed device for their learning. There are districts just to our east and west who are doing this, $25 buy-ins, rentals for their kids, every single kid in their school to have a graphing calculator. And then there you can see what Lake Park does. And if we were at Lake Park also, we'd have 11.6 math teachers right now, we have 11. And their kids must have a graphing calculator for every single class. So please, please give some consideration to the way that we are using mathematics uh, and, and treating it. Thank you. Our next speaker is Marshall Fuga regarding Calc 3. Yeah, yes, 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 you may. Thank you. I was going to start talking before Thank I hand these out, and I learned from Mr. Porter, who's still teaching, that the clock will not start until I walk up to the podium. So <laughs> I'm going to hand out my pamphlet for everybody to keep talking. What Mr. Porter didn't do is, whenever you approach the bench, you need to say, may I approach? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mark. Uh, uh, Mr. Board President, uh, as the board president, you have the right to set the agenda as well as how much time people get to speak. Three minutes, there's no way in our law on says how long you get. As a president, you can say, I'm gonna give five minutes to people to speak. You don't get a lot of people coming here. I understand your time is valuable, but I would say it seems like everybody who speaks, even me tonight, is rushed. And so number one, I ask you to consider at a future meeting allowing for five minutes for public comment. The second is, uh, issue with emails. On your website, you can email the board by clicking to uh, the website, it's a link. I was up there last night drafting an email to the board, that link does not work. So as a parent or a taxpayer, I can't email the entire board by your own website. I can email Mr. Antingo, but the rest of it doesn't go through. So if somebody in IT could look into that. The last thing I'm here for is the Fenton Five. Uh, the email was in the center last night, and I do come in peace today. I got a response from Mr. Lazarevich that the Fenton was going to speak to his policy that they already adopted in this handbook for the cost of $1,200 per student, and that the board already decided that. I didn't see that the board decided it, and he sent me a copy of the uh, courses and it says $1,200. I don't know if the board ever had a discussion about that $1,200 or if the 50 pages of the pamphlet were just put in front of you on a consent agenda and say, please pass this for next year's courses. If that's what staff and the administration is doing, they're making your job way too hard. You should not have to read 50 pages of a pamphlet of each class uh, description they should at least tell you what things have changed. And they should probably tell you, we're gonna offer Calc 3 for the first time. But then they should also tell you, it's gonna cost $1,200. And it's up to you guys to decide as the policymakers whether or not you should charge your students that $1,200. So as I was doing my email last night, I still started saying, I don't understand. We pay for administrators' classes. We pay for teachers' college classes. But for the students, we're not gonna do it but I come in peace today. I come in peace because I have a solution. Thanks to Mr. Martin, I asked him because I went through your budget to see what the line item was for college expenses. I couldn't find it, but Mr. Martin was nice enough to tell me it's $30,000 for fiscal year that ends uh, 
June 30th, 2021. We've only spent $6,441 for reimbursement. Mr. Chairman, can I still go a little bit longer? Yeah, yes. Please. Thank you. So we only spent $6,441. There's $23,000 left in the current budget for reimbursement of college classes for teachers and administrators. Let's just let the students use that money as well. And whatever's not used for this year, because there might be some more coming in, carry that money over to the next budget so the Fenton Five can get that Calc 3 class paid for if they don't get the scholarships or other grants. Mr. President, I appreciate you talking about the Bensonville uh, Foundation, and we will look into that. This is just a backup plan. So I was gonna come all angry tonight, but I came with solutions. So thank you, Mr. Martin. I'd ask you to carry over the unused budget from this year and the next year's budget for the Fenton Five. Thank you. I wanted to thank you, the public speakers, for coming here today. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And now we go to recognitions, the good news. Uh, uh, Superintendent Antenko, please. Sure. Uh, we got two teams uh, that we would like to recognize this evening, the chess team and contest drama. The chess team has prepared a video. Jim, please play the, uh, play the video. Routinely plays against much larger programs, and they, they hold their own, and they do very well. This is their 14th consecutive year qualifying for state. Thanks, Rick. I'm Stephanie Downen. I'm one of the coaches of Ben's chess team. Uh, thank you so much to the board for bringing us here for this recognition tonight. We are very grateful to have this opportunity. Um, Mrs. Shelley Bible is our other chess coach. We could not have gotten through this season without her. Um, there's a few other people that we just want to thank right off the bat. Especially thanks to the board for keeping our program intact, being able to have two coaches and all of the resources that we have in a normal season were really important to us because we did compete um, as much as we always compete, just in a different format. Thanks to Mr. Becker for all of his support. Lori Speeden and Mary Thomas made it possible for us to register for tournaments, even though we were off campus. And thanks to Tom Corbel and Geneva Ryderson and the whole maintenance crew for uh, coordinating and setting up our physical space and transportation. Uh, we spent about 22 hours over the course of two days in mostly one room, and we did it safely and comfortably. Thanks to Jim Batson and the entire IT department, as well as Mike Barago for getting us set up to compete online throughout the season, as well as when we played online from the building over these two days. This is our 14th year qualifying for the state chess tournament, and we were able to qualify in an incredibly unique and challenging year. Last year, we graduated our top eight players. So this year, in a remote school year, we had to recruit new players and prepare a very young squad to compete all season in our conference and in preparation for qualifying for the state tournament. Every practice and competition leading up to the state tournament was completely remote. So there were Saturdays where we spent 10 hours in Google Meets together, very much feeling like we were in each other's homes. It was a wonderful year. We got to know each other very well, and it was a privilege to have experienced this chess season, really. This year's team was incredibly dedicated and put many, many hours into practicing and learning online. We improved continuously over the season and had a very strong finish at state. Right now, it's my privilege to introduce our state qualifying chess players this year. First up, we have ninth grader Alex Aguilar Carrera. Ninth grader Anthony Bigham. Junior Naomi Zine. Naomi won both matches that she played in, so she was undefeated in her performance at this year's state chess tournament. Ninth grader, Eric Zeem. Ninth grader, Adamari Gomez. Junior, Joaquin Olivares. Sophomore, Sarah Schaefer. 
Sarah finished with five and a half points out of seven, which is a very, very strong finish at the state chess tournament, which is seven rounds. Sophomore, Brenna Ralston. Senior, Mark Barrios. Mark was our only senior on the squad this year and his leadership was very much appreciated. Ninth grader, Drew Salski. As a ninth grader, Drew went undefeated this state tournament, winning six points at board two. A very strong accomplishment and uh, setting some pretty high expectations for the future. And our one board, our general, Sophomore Emilio Sanchez. The team did very well at this year's state tournament. We finished with three and a half points out of seven, actually with uh, a higher finish than we did with last year's team full of eight seniors. We got wins against Wheaton North, Manuka, and Chicago St. Rita, and we tied versus Chicago Taft. We were never swept. We had close matches in all of our rounds. And it was a very exciting couple of days for us to be together for the first time all season. So we met each other in real life for the first time for these two days at the state competition. We finished 12th overall in a 3A division. We're very proud of this team. We wish Mark well, and we're very, very excited for uh, another season. Thank you. Downing is here. She wanted to just wave. Thank you, Ms. Downing. Peter Oxium, the show must go on, was really put to task this year, and go on, it did. Despite the various obstacles that our contest drama students faced, they were able to make sure that the show, the show did indeed go on by placing third at the Upstate 8 Conference and receiving six Upstate 8 All-Cast Awards. Next, they placed second at the IHSA Sectionals and advanced to state with four students receiving all, all sectional cast awards. And then they placed fourth at state and three individuals were named, uh, were given all state honors. And Dr. Mitchell will come on up and explain and introduce the students. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the board for inviting us tonight. Um, this is quite an honor for us to be here with you. And uh, I have to say right off the bat, you know, like listening to, um, you know, the video, the fact that you guys met for the first time in person, this is only our third time together. And uh, yeah, I mean, which is pretty amazing. So again, I want to thank you. And, and I can't be up here without sharing the stage and maybe a few lines as well from them. They are actors after all. So um I'm going to have them, uh, we talked a little bit about this, I'm going to have them introduce themselves in just what year they are, so go, so take it away. Um, hi everyone, I'm Joan Hitt and I'm a junior. I'm Yorali Galeno and I'm also a junior. I'm Imani Kashif and I'm also a junior. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Lauren Kassane and I just graduated. Hey. Hey. I'm Bart Sporner and I also graduated. <laughs> My name is Chris Povich, and I'm the third one to graduate. <laughs> My name is Carolina Rosas, and I'm a junior. All right, awesome job. Um, I love hearing junior, junior, junior. That means hopefully they'll be back next year. So um, <laughs> uh, I, I also want to thank uh, Mr. Barr, who is here, or the, right over there, um, and Ms. Baker as well, who could not uh, join us tonight. Without them, uh, this would really be impossible. I'm going to be may be quick, but I would like to tell you a little bit about the play and a little bit about the process and that kind of thing. The play Good Kids is set in a Midwestern high school in the world of Facebook, Twitter, smartphones, and YouTube. Uh, Good Kids explores the casual encounter that goes wrong in the very public aftermath of that encounter. As one judge at State said, 
nice job of highlighting how this social issue is treated in our current social media environment. Another judge stated, wow, what a difficult piece to perform. And yet you all found creative ways to have these characters interact and relate with each other. And my own favorite comment was, did you really do this all from your homes? Hard to believe, bravo. This year's contest drama was by far the most collaborative process we have ever done. Each student here, due to the unique nature of this year's competition, had to be their own costume, set, and lighting designer, with much help from Mr. Barr and Ms. Baker. Again, I cannot thank those two enough. And despite all of this, our students put together a great piece of theater and represented our, st our school with a lot of pride at the state level. As Mr. Kambick earlier said, the show must go on, and indeed it did. In their own words, I asked them earlier this year, what was your favorite thing about this year's experience? Lauren, please raise your hand as I point you out. Lauren said, um, what I love about Contest Drama is really being able to immerse yourself in the story and creating an image for the audience. Lauren also was an All-State cast member. Uh, Chris said, I would have to say the support from everyone, hearing everybody and how they enjoyed each other and supported each other's performances meant a lot. Uh, Bart, the bonds I've created with each cast member. Even though it was virtual, it was still so much fun. Norelli, my favorite part of contest drama was working on our own part separately and then seeing how it all came together. Joan, I loved being able to laugh with my best friend over the screen. She is everything to me. And I'm glad I was able to make something with her. Joan was also an All-State cast member. Amani. I've enjoyed the memories I've made and for the many laughs that we shared. And Carolina, being able to chat with the people. I lost communication with a lot of them. It was nice to see how they were doing. Carolina was also an All-State cast member. And Carolina, I couldn't agree with you more. We lost a lot this past year. And uh, putting this show together, albeit virtually, made us all feel a little bit more whole. I would like to end by simply saying congratulations on making it to stay, but more importantly, for making this work. You are all warriors for the performing arts, and each of you will forever have my admiration, my respect, and my thoughts. Thank you. Come on, guys, get in the back. Sam, let's go up here. John. Mr. Madel. We'll be in the background. All right. All right. Let's take one more. Let's take one more. One more. <laughs> hey, Rick, do you want them to put them here so we can take it with the board? Okay. How about, the, how about the, co the coaches? Please don't fall. How about the coaches also? Uh, watch the trip hazards, guys, please. These kids are tall. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you again, congratulations. Uh, let's go to informational items, please. And uh, that goes to Superintendent Antango. Thank you, President Ting Pao Pong. Uh, first and foremost, we want to, again, to uh, pay tribute to the, uh, the class of 2021. Mr. Kambik has done a great job just now. And he does even a better job taking pictures at graduation. So he has uh, 
accumulated some pictures here. We can look at the screen, Ms. Uh, Dr. Batson, and, and just show uh, our viewers some of the pictures at the graduation. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Cambic. These folks did not graduate, so make sure everyone. Let's give another hand for our class of 2020. <laughs> Next item here is uh, the equity report. Um, as you all know, Fenn engaged in equity uh, about uh, during the 2019-2020 uh, school year. Through the audit process, we established our DEL team or the district equity leadership team. The DEL team is working hard to create an objectives and action plans. Members of the DEL team or, or strand leaders will come to our uh, June board meeting and present the, the latest um, action plans and objectives to the board. So this is just really a, uh, a, um, an update uh, for our upcoming June meeting that uh, Dr. Dubiel as well as strand leaders will be here to present the latest news from the DEL team. The DEL has basically has five strands, okay, five big general goals. They are systems, teaching and learning, student voice, climate and culture, number four, professional learning, and number five, family and community as an agency. System strand focused on to ensure a systematic and continuous development towards advancing equity within all policies, processes, procedures, initiatives, decision-making, and fiscal responsibilities. Teaching and learning focuses on to intentionally embed equity-driven pedagogy to curriculum, resources, instructional approaches, use and consideration of assessment and academic programming for the purpose of advancing equity among all students. Number three, student voice, climate and culture. This focuses on to consistently seek students' feedback and experiences on organizational culture and climate. Professional learning focuses on to provide a continuum of professional learning and growth opportunities for all staff in pursuit of educational equity. And lastly, family and community as an agency to partner with families and community for authentic opportunities to serve the students, the district, and the school. That will be coming up uh, next June at our June board meeting. Next slide, please. COVID metrics, we do this every month. As you could see here, look at the blue arrows on the fourth column, uh, third column from the left, it's going in the right direction. Out of the six or seven indicators there, say one, two, three, four, four are minimal. One is still substantial, and we always wanted to focus that, that this column here has been very, very tricky. And for this substantial, to turn to moderate, this has to go below 100. There, ISE, ISBE, as well as IDPH and the DuPage County Public Health, they will reach this in about two weeks. So that will change from substantial to moderate. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Numbers are down. This picture right here, basically, you shout out to DuPage. We're number one in regards to vaccinating our residents uh, by a huge percentage, by like two or three percentage points. 44.28 of our population has been vaccinated. And here is just a trend line here. By age group, all age group, as we saw, is going down. Okay, we continue. Uh, what's interesting uh, here with this blue and a little bit of the red, these are the folks that are lastly receiving vaccinations. Okay, so the trend is moving in the right direction. Some COVID updates for Fenton here. Fenton will continue to uh, to uh, continue with COVID mitigations. Through, this, through summer school, we're gonna continue wearing our masks to social distance and disinfect. 
Okay, some vaccination update. This will be Mr. Kambik, our fifth vaccination effort. Fifth vaccination effort started in January. Basically, every month we have one. It's gonna. Uh, this will be 12 years and older. May 27th is the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Second dose is June 17th. We're encouraging all students 12 years and older to participate. We're collaborating with District 2, District 7, and obviously Fenton here. Um, so if you people are uh, watching this and have kids 12 years and older, please sign up uh, through your schools. Affordable Care Act, ACA. The Affordable Care Act report is a yearly mandatory reporting to determine if any part-time employees have, a, uh, have average full-time hours by working 30 or more hours per week and are eligible for health insurance. This year, no one qualified. Uh, Finance Facility Committee meeting review. We had that at 6 p.m. this, after, uh, sat, uh, this evening. Bruce, Sam. Sure, uh, thanks, Mr. Antango. We had a full agenda at six o'clock, so thanks to the board members for coming. And uh, the agenda included the overview of the Fenton budget and the activity that how we're tracking through April, um, the ESSER grants and tentative planning, the summer building projects, the next steps um, as far as going forward with, with the uh, presentation. Um, just to, uh, Sam Benson and I are gonna kind of tag team this, but I'll start with the finance piece of it. Uh, we reviewed an overview of the budget summary activity through April 30th. Um, we reviewed the funding sources as well that include local, state, and federal sources. Overall revenues are tracking at 57.39% compared to 54.86 last April at the same time. Uh, the drivers there really are causing that uh, overage, uh, which is a good thing, is the replacement taxes, categorical payment, state aid, um, and federal meal uh, program reimbursement. So those are the kind of the drivers there that, that's causing that uptick. On the expenditure side, we're at 76.46%, 4, so a little over 76, almost 0.5% compared to 80% last year. Uh, some notable items, salaries and, uh, are tracking lower due to fewer substitute needs, stipends, uh, uh, open positions and fewer extra hours. And then the corresponding benefits are tracking lower as well that are tied to salaries. And then our non-labor expenses um, are tracking lower as well and include purchase services, um, less professional development, less travel costs, things like that. Uh, our supply needs, classroom supplies, uh, janitorial supplies with the exception of PPE stuff are, are tracking lower. And then the one thing the cost that is kind of stable is our, our tuition uh, outside placements as well as our debt service payments are, are uh, on par with last year. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Benson. Thank you, and, and at the committee meeting, we went over the various ESSER funds, funds being made available to our district through the federal government. And we're focusing on uh, a few areas. One is, is furniture for flex flexible spaces, um, for blended learning and other opportunities for kids that we don't currently have. Uh, learning labs, we're going to establish uh, furniture in, in new learning lab environments. Another area was personnel, where we're trying to address learning loss. We are looking at social emotional support and also through the equity lens. And then finally, the uh, ionization project we highlighted, which was already approved at, a, at the May 4th board meeting. Then we also went into our summer building projects that we're looking at right now. We're planning our typical maintenance. It would be for seal coating. Uh, concrete work and tuck pointing and also every year we, we try to keep working on our flooring and the, in the hallways to replace we're also doing an auto shop a ventilation project and finally uh, softball field dugouts which we are working on this summer Real quickly, July board meetings, we're planning to have two for our July board meeting. Just uh, please note that we have uh, Dr. D. Molinari coming for the Illinois Social School Board training. Uh, the title of that meeting is Foundational Principles. It will be Wednesday, July 21st, uh, starting at 6. So therefore, since it's going to be on the 21st, we have to push back our regular board meeting a week. So that will be on July 28th. Uh, at seven o'clock, I will send reminders in regards to that. We will post that on our website. Um, and next is our consent agenda. Sure, just real quick. Uh, 
Summer maintenance hour item F, we do this every year. Basically, these are uh, for a certified staff who needs to maintain uh, classroom equipment, for example, in, in the auto shop, small engines, uh, some auto equipment, uh, the wood shop uh, needs to be maintained. Uh, some computer um, uh, repairs need to be made. It's, it's, we find it more economical if we have our own teachers and experts in the building to maintain those equipment and rather than bringing in someone else. So we do this every year. So if you're wondering what item F is all about, that's what it's all about. And item G, real quick, if I, if I reported to you, basically what that is, is we had the wrong attachment last, last month. We have the right one here. So therefore we have to approve that uh, this evening. Okay, my apologies. Next is the consent agenda. Oh, my apologies. Um, may I have a motion that the Board of Education approve uh, the consent agenda? So moved. I would second. Roll call, please. Friedman? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Cade? Yes. Radzinski? Yes. Team Popom? Yes. Uh, motion passed. Okay, let's get to the discussion on action items. Sure, I'll take that one. Uh, item A, the 2021-2022 NEDSEC classroom lease agreement. Our partner NEDSEC, which stands for the North DuPage Special Education Cooperative, would like to continue its annual lease with Fenton. NEDSEC rents out one classroom from Fenton to serve Fenton students. NEDSEC pays the district $15,000 per year, a small revenue for us. Uh, the lease is for one year. And we recommend that the Board of Education approves renewing the NEDSEC program here um, with their lease. I just, one question. This is specific to our students? Or this is our students. students yeah. It's not oh, Lake Park okay. or any of this. Is just curious. Wooddale or, or Bensonville students. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, this is the $15,000. Uh, right, they pay for lease. Let me have a motion uh, to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the lease as presented. I'll second. Okay, roll call. Wiedemann? Yes. Aid? Yes. Ridzinski? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Team Paul Pong? Yes. And motion passed. Thank you, President Tink Paul Palm. Next item is B 2021 anticipated summer curriculum hours. We're going to have uh, our director of curriculum, Mrs. Papa Nicolau, talk about that. Thank you. So um, each year we present this to the board. Um, we present a request for hours for our certified staff to develop curriculum. Um, I, I have to say that I um, I feel grateful for the staff that we have, that they're still willing to put forth and persevere. They spent hours upon hours last summer preparing for this pandemic through curriculum development, and they're still going, they're still going at it. Um, so they know that there's still revisions to be made because of learning loss, and they're getting back to projects that we've been working on for quite some time. So I'm really impressed at their perseverance and grateful for it. Um, we, we pay this work out at a collective uh, bargaining agreement rate of $25.80 for said work. Um, we've had um, teachers request from nearly every department about 1,165 hours for a total spend of a, approximately $30,000. Um, I've included in um, your packet a worksheet outlining um, all of the different types of work that we um, look to approve. Um, we provide our teachers autonomy in the curriculum development with guidance and oversight. So um, they will either submit for major course revisions, uh, special projects. Um, in this case, we were doing work with career programs of study or returning to learn and social emotional learning projects. Um, in some cases, we have new courses that they're working to develop. Um, if they are a new teacher of a course, we provide them with hours to prepare. And if there's a new textbook being adopted, they will have some time to review and prepare with that new textbook, which is mostly online. 
just so you, just so you know. And um, you'll see in this worksheet that this year we will be using ESSER funds for some of this work, particularly because most of this is affected by the pandemic and we are responding to the effects of the pandemic and potential learning loss. And then there will be other areas like new course development, new teacher of course, and new textbook preparation that will come out of local funds. Um, last year, we spent over $100,000 on curriculum development over the summer, some of which bled into this fiscal year. So um, Bruce and I talk about the budget and say, okay, what can we approve from what was requested? And this is what we're presenting. So for each of those types of work, there's some guidelines. Um, and we give up to 10 hours per teacher for major course revisions and special projects, new course development gets 15 hours. New teacher, of course, and textbooks get $5 per teacher. So we're grateful that they're willing to continue working hard to make learning uh, meaningful for our students. Um, and um, we look forward to a, a nice summer full of creative ideas and um, solutions to what we've experienced this year. So I um, am asking the board to please um, approve the requested 2021 anticipated summer curriculum hours as presented. I have a question. How many teachers will be participating? Mm, if I had to estimate, because I don't have that particular number in front of me, I'd probably say about um, 30 to 40 teachers. Thank you. Of course. Any other questions? May I have a motion uh, that the Board of Education authorize uh, administration to utilize requested 2021 anticipated summer curriculum hours as presented? I'll make that motion. Second. 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 Okay. Uh, roll call, please, Ms. Timmons. Weedman? Yes. Redzinski? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Cade? Yes. Team Popong? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. President. Item in C is 2021 anticipated summer workshop hours. Ms. Papa Nicolau. Thank you. So each year we also request from the board um, uh, and present to you the, the request for hours for certified staff to participate in summer workshops. Um, last year we provided a great deal of professional learning to make the transition from an in-person model to a, a remote model. We're excited to get back into the building and continue some of the work towards a personalized learning approach that we had started. Um, so um, we will be holding a number of workshops and um, I've included a worksheet for you on the Fenton hosted professional development. We also have a number of other opportunities that are hosted from outside agencies um, like Babbel. We're allowing, we're allowing teachers um, to get a subscription to Babbel so they can learn some conversational Spanish. We're also working with another agency called the Modern Classroom for um, teachers to have an in-depth um, look at what an, uh, a mastery-based classroom would look like. Um, for our in-house professional development, some of our instructional coaches and our instructional, um, I'm sorry, our um, instructional tech coordinators will be hosting some professional learning for blended learning. Um, we have some specific math professional development happening, um, some learning on evidence-based reporting, and we will be hosting our Grading for Equity book study as, long, as well as providing coaching for our new grade book. So you can see it totals to about 577 hours um, with an estimated allocation of approximately $11,788. And it, um, I didn't break it down um, by department in this worksheet, but um, I, I would say that most every department is represented and we, we have a great deal of participation from our teachers. Once again, grateful and impressed that they're continuing to forge forward in their learning and continue to create a better environment for Fenton. So I'm asking that the board authorize um, and approve the requested 2021 anticipated summer workshop hours as presented. Yeah, just a quick question, Ms. Pop Nicolau. Um, when, when we look at the, the different programs, uh, professional development programs and education that we offer, 
do we have um, like a feedback loop from the people that participate and what's the typical sentiment on that? How do we measure that? Always, after every single professional um, learning opportunity, we ask for feedback. Um, we have state mandated questions that we ask and then we have our own personal um, feedback um, requests depending on the learning. Um, so we use that to continue to grow and improve our professional learning. It's really important to us that our teachers are teaching one another because we do have a developed expertise in the building, but especially when we have outside providers, we want to make sure that they're quality and that, um, you know, if we ever invite them back that they've been um, well received and um, feel like we've um, gotten something out of it. Thank yes. you. All right. Uh May I have a motion that the Board of Education authorize the administration to utilize requested 2021 anticipated summer workshop hours as presented? So moved. I second. Roll call, please. I'm sorry, who was the second? Okay. I'm sorry. Did you say? Yep, roll call, please. Woodman? Yes. Redzinski? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Cade? Yes. Team Popong? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. President. Item D, school treasury surety bond. Mr. Bruce Martin. Okay, uh, the board may remember a couple of weeks ago, May 4th, you approved uh, to appoint the CSBO myself as the school treasurer. That's the first kind of stage of this process. And now um, tonight we present to you the uh, seeking approval for the surety bond um, of the school treasurer as required by law for the 2021-22 school year um, and the resolution and all associated documentation as required will be filed with the DuPage County Regional Office of Education. So tonight we're just asking for the board to approve the resolution uh, of the surety bond of the treasurer as presented. I know this is a required item, but I didn't see a cost. I'm assuming there's a cost somewhere. It's been budgeted. It's um, $4,781. Yes. Reasonable. I just, I didn't see a cost. Thank you. Uh, so board may have a motion that the Board of Education approve resolution appro uh, approving short the shorty bond of treasurer. I'll make that motion. And I'll second. Uh, Ms. Tibbins, may I have a roll call, please? Weedman? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Cade? Yes. Redzinski? Yes. Team Popong? Yes. And motion passed. Thank you, Mr. President. Item E, discussion only, health insurance renewal. Mr. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Antango. Uh, just an information discussion item, um, but uh, an item we want to obviously share with you every year. Uh, the health insurance renewal, uh, which would this would take effect July 1st, 2021. Um, first, let me just start by saying we're part of a cooperative. So the Educational Benefit Cooperative is a, is a co-op consisting of about 112 school districts, primarily in Northern Illinois. We're one of those districts um, and we've been uh, a member since July of 2009. Um, we did, uh, and there are two meetings, renewal meetings every year. Um, there's a pre-renewal and then a final renewal meeting. And that's where this information is provided to all the members who vote on it. and, and, and uh, finalize it at that time. Um, we received the final medical and dental insurance premium renewal information for the 2021 school year from the EBC. And we are pleased that the rates uh, have all dropped uh, across the board with, for all of our plans, three plans that we offer, um, one PPO plan, two HMO plans, and the dental plan, they've all decreased. Uh, much of the past year's health related expenses were disrupted by the COVID pandemic uh, as a result, probably not to no one's surprise, I think, uh, some instances there. Uh, and so actual claims were under projected expenses. So uh, the district's renewal uh, is, is outlined uh, in the document that I provided uh, in the board packet. So based on the, and there is a formula derived. So your, your claims are factored into this as well. So we had a favorable claim year as well. Uh, we did better than the, than the middle of the banding formula. So that's a, that's a great thing as well. Um, so our PPO medical, uh, Costs will decrease, and this, of course, will occur to the board and the and the employee. Uh, that'll go down by 2.1 percent. Last year, it increased by 4.7. Uh, 
the HMO uh, Illinois plan and, and, um, and Blue Advantage plan. We offered the two HMO plans, so it decreased by 1.9%. Last year, it increased by 5.3. And then finally, the dental uh, will decrease by 4.1, and it went up 1.3 last year. And our life insurance is unchanged, and that'll uh, stay that way for the next three years. So that's kind of... Uh, what it looks like in terms of the renewal for next year. Right now we're in open enrollment, it'll end this Friday. And uh, people have the opportunity obviously with, with, uh, to, to change plans if they so desire. And that'll become effective on July 1st. I know this is informational, but I do have a question. I, being part of the call-off previously, uh, the slide, is this a sliding scale? Is it one year's expenses, two years, three years, an average of? It's, it's, it's like 18 months. Okay. Yeah is what goes into it yeah so um and again um I, I guess i should say also the plan it's a blue cross plan um it can be designed any way you want so you're part of a cooperative but you have the autonomy to develop the plan in any sector you want deductibles or co-pays or drug costs that type of thing so you do have that flexibility as a, as a member so which is is great and how, how members like it that way too so well that sounds good just how many months history yeah. everything is based no, on. No good question. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Mr. President, we're done with the discussion action items. All right, thank you. Um, let's talk about our committees. Let's, let's start with um, the Ventsville Community Foundation. Sylvia, do we have anything? No, I, uh, I haven't. Okay. No. And uh, the DI committee with us. We're, we're getting together and, yeah. and uh, going through all that. Uh, nothing to report on the DEI committee. The Finance and Facilities Committee, um, Mr. Rosinski and uh, Mr. Wheatley. Just what we discussed earlier, we're moving forward with the plan, looking at the furniture. Uh, good discussion, good learning points for myself as a new board member, but I, I like where we're going and how we're utilizing the funds that have been provided through uh, the grants in a positive way. So we're, we're making good steps. Yeah, I, I think that hits it right in the head. You know, the, the main items that discussed were the summer projects, the lab furniture needed uh, needed for learning loss to to assist in learning loss, staffing uh, to add staff for learning loss, uh, ventilation, all supported through ESSER two and ESSER uh, money, and then it was also stressed the urgency to move forward is timing. Is, uh, is going to be of the essence regarding these efforts. Okay, thank you for the report. And the IASB delegate, Mr. Weedman? Uh, nothing to the report there. Okay, and then uh, we'll pass on Len. Uh, Ms. Uh, Jalowick's not present. Nedsack, Leo? Uh, I wasn't there, but uh, Mr. Dingle was there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Basically, um, and just to tell a funny story, Mr. Uh, Figueroa wasn't there, and uh, <laughs> this, this is what you get when you're not there. Mr. Figueroa was uh, elected the president <laughs> of the board for the next session. No, in, in all, all, all honesty, yes, he was elected. He was uh, not present. Uh, he had some uh, important issues to take care of. At work, uh, this will be his second term, um, and so he is uh, doing an outstanding job with our North DuPage uh, Special Ed Co-op. Thank you, Mr. Leo. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next policy committee, uh, there is no new business, and uh, I believe we're scheduled for uh, the next month, but we might be swapping it. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, the next board meet, uh, meeting, uh, new business. Let's see, Wednesday, June 23rd, that's uh, 7 p.m. with our, uh, we'll scratch the policy committee meeting. It's tentative and then scheduled at uh, six, but uh, we're gonna do the finance uh, meeting then, correct? That is correct. Okay. If we don't receive any new policies from the Illinois Association of School Board Press, we will uh, go back, since there's so much in the ESSER grant and discuss finance and uh, facilities projects. So that's really a, a calendar holder for the board. Uh, we will have some formal meeting on that day. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, we will go to closed session now, but I think um, under the uh, instruction or idea of Mr. Rosinski uh, to let the public know that there's not going to be any new business after this, after the closed session. Uh, so we certainly don't want you to wait if you don't need to. Um, may I have a motion and thank it to go into closed session for the purpose of the appointment, uh, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the public body or legal counsel for the public body, including hearing testimony on a complaint lodged against an employee of the public body or against legal counsel for the public body to determine its validity. However, meeting to consider an increase in compensation to specify a specific employee of a, a public body that is subject to the local government wage increase transparency act may not be closed and shall be open to the public and posted and held in accordance with this act um, and collective excuse me it's a uh, 5 ilcs 120 slash 2 c1 and collective negotiating matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees um, again, the, 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 you know, the rule is 5 ILCS 120 slash 2C1. Roll call, please. You need a motion. motion or first oh, I'm sorry. Uh, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Weedman? Yes. Figueroa? Yes. Paid? Yes. Residency? Yes. King Paul Fung? Yes. Okay. We don't have any other business, and uh, so may have a motion to adjourn. So moved. I second. Uh, can I get a roll call? Who's, who was the second? Leo Kidd. You oh, you're yes. saying I second? Yes. Okay, I because I wasn't under I wasn't understanding. It sounds like you're saying second, and no one's responding. <laughs> so we'll okay. we'll, do, we'll get better. We'll get uh, better. Thanks. Wiedemann? Yes. Radzinski? Yes, ma'am. Figueroa? Yes. Paid? Yes. King Po Pong? Yes. Motion passed and everybody get home safe. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.